Well, good morning, everyone. Russ Barkley here to brighten up your day. What do you think of the outfit? I wore it to a costume party the other night that required that you wear something sparkly or in bling. So here I am. And to also brighten up your day, let's get right to the awful dad jokes I like to start with on this Saturday Research Review. First up, and by the way, these come to us from prevention.com. The first joke is, why did the tomato blush? It saw the salad dressing. Oh, shocking. Absolutely shocking. So here's another. Why is it bad to iron a four-leaf clover? Because you should never press your luck. <laughs> really now. Okay, one last one. Then we got to move on here. What did one hat say to the other? You wait here. I'm going on ahead. Oh, boy. All right. Thanks to Prevention. Really appreciate those dad jokes. We've got four articles to discuss this morning. There wasn't very much research published in the last week that was, I would consider, noteworthy. So we're just going to talk about the four I think might deserve a little comment. Sometimes it's not because they're introducing any new results, but because they either come from a foreign country that ordinarily doesn't publish in the area, and I like to highlight those just to show that ADHD is a worldwide phenomenon. And that, of course, is why I'm covering this first article. This one comes out of the Journal of Health Research, and it was done by some investigators in Indonesia. But it turns out, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a review of the literature, so kind of like a meta-analysis, and these investigators are looking at the rate of ADHD in the offspring of pregnant teenagers, many of whom also had ADHD. So why would I highlight this? We already know to some extent, particularly with research that was originally done in Canada by Eric Mash and Charlotte Johnson and others many years ago, that teenagers who are more likely to get pregnant and to have babies are more likely to have ADHD. And the reverse is also true. That is, Teenagers with ADHD are more likely to have children before they're 19 years of age. So it goes both ways. And that's what these investigators found, of course, is that there was a higher than typical rate of ADHD among these pregnant teenagers. And they also report that the offspring of these women were also more likely to have ADHD. Now, that's not very shocking, is it? Since we know ADHD is a strikingly genetic disorder, so if the mother has it, even if she's a teenage mother, there's a high probability, 40 to 50% or more, that the child is going to have ADHD as well. So they also point out that there was a higher rate of disability among these women in the sense that they were having difficulties with daily functioning, employment, and so on, and therefore... The article argues that we need to provide a lot more services to pregnant women who are teens, and especially if they have ADHD. So I uh, just wanted to cover that topic with you uh, this morning and acknowledge uh, an article from a foreign country. Of course, next up is going to be the prevalence and correlates of adult ADHD and its subtypes. Why am I talking about this? Since there's so much research now on adults with ADHD, it's because it comes out of China. And so in this report from these Chinese investigators, they are looking at very large samples of adults, in this case, nearly 7,400 adults, that they had complete various questionnaires dealing with their positive childhood experiences, negative childhood experiences, their degree of aggression, their degree of inhibition problems, degree of ADHD symptoms, uh, and also the extent to which they engage in suicidal behavior. And this, of course, is retrospective reports by these individuals. So self-reports, we kind of have to keep that in mind when we're thinking about the quality of the research. This was not corroborated through mental health records or through other people. What did they find? They found a rate of adult ADHD to be 6.7%, little higher than we see in the U.S., over here, it's around 4 to 5%, declining somewhat with age to about 3% in the elderly, but pretty close to our prevalence rate. So 
just to show you that ADHD, of course, is an international disorder worldwide, and to show you that the prevalence is not all that much different in other countries than it is here in the U.S. or North America. So just wanted to acknowledge that. They also found, of course, that the adults with high levels of symptoms of ADHD reported more negative childhood experiences, less positive experiences, more aggressive behavior, had engaged in more suicidal forms of behavior, uh, and of course had struggled with other things as well, including experiencing more childhood traumatic events. But we've talked about that in other videos, the correlation of ADHD with trauma. Uh, and by the way, in case you haven't seen my other videos, we interpret that as showing that ADHD predisposes to being exposed to traumatic events not that traumatic events cause ADHD de novo. Okay, so a nice article there out of China, published over in Current Psychology. My next article is on the prevalence of ADHD among different ethnic groups. It's a meta-analysis, and you know I like those. Why would I focus on this? There already had been some earlier studies. I'm focusing on it for two reasons. One is, it's a review of all the existing literature on this. The second is that it found what I found when I did my national surveys of ADHD symptoms, and that is that there were no significant differences among various ethnic groups in the prevalence of ADHD. So why do I emphasize that? Because some people think that ADHD is more common among Caucasian or white individuals uh, that's because they get access to resources probably more than do more disadvantaged ethnic groups. Uh, on the other hand, there are those who have claimed that ADHD is more common among black youth because of racial discrimination and a bias in referring black youth, particularly disruptive black youth, to mental health services. Haven't heard that about Latinos or Asians, by the way. What this review shows is what the other studies earlier have shown, and that is that there are no significant differences in prevalence of disorder among these ethnic groups. They do report relatively high prevalence figures, uh, about 16.5% for black children and adolescents, uh, and about 12.5% uh, for Latinos, and of course, about 15.9% for other individuals. So, uh, but don't pay any attention to those figures. I don't want to harp on them because some of these studies that were reviewed were just using rating scales. They didn't use clinical criteria, clinical diagnosis. They hadn't been seen by mental health professionals. They were just filling out questionnaires. And we know that if all you use is a rating scale, you get very high rates of ADHD, sometimes three to four times higher than what you would get with using full clinical criteria. But uh, the point is taken, no ethnic differences in rates of ADHD. Last study up is on the pubertal timing of adolescents with ADHD. This study focuses on a female sample. The earlier studies were with predominantly males and had much smaller percentages of females. This study is based on Steve Hinshaw's longitudinal research following large samples of ADHD in typical girls into adulthood. And in this paper, Emily Rosenthal and Steve Hinshaw report in the European Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Journal that there were no differences between typical females and ADHD females in various measures of the onset of puberty. They did find that there was a small delay in the onset of menses in the females with ADHD, but on all the other measures of pubertal timing, no differences. And they don't make much of that particular finding because it is also based on self-reports. So uh, another paper there, I highlight this because there's so little research on not only girls and women with ADHD, that's improving. We're getting a lot more studies out, but very little research now on pubertal development and other aspects of ADHD in females. If you want to see more about the influence of hormones 
on women with ADHD. See my earlier video discussing a review of that literature. So uh, a nice paper here by my friend Steve Hinshaw and one of his colleagues. So, well, that's it for this Saturday. Hope you enjoyed the bling, that it brightened up your Saturday morning. And I hope you'll join me again next Saturday for another research review. In the meantime, as always, everybody, I suggest that you live well and that you be well. Bye now.